Welcome to Rainier Avenue Radio. This is Afternoons with Monique, recording live in Seattle, Washington, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Welcome to Rainier Avenue Radio. This is Monique Lee from Afternoons with Monique radio show. Today, I have the pleasure of having one of our public servants, Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary France, who leads Washington State's wildlife, uh, wildfire fighting force and manages nearly 6 million acres of public lands from coastal waters to aquatic reserves to forking forests and farms, commercial developments, and unparalleled recreation areas. Please welcome to Afternoons with Monique, Commissioner France. Hello there. So great to be joining you. Yes, I'm sorry about the station connectivity issue, but so glad you are here looking lovely. Thank are you, you enjoying this weather? Oh, I absolutely am. I'll be honest, though, as the woman who's heading up the wildfire for the state, I appreciate the rain and snow and cooler temperatures more than I ever have, even though I'm a Northwest native and appreciate the sun. Right. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that later uh, with the uh, hot season coming. Summer is a beautiful time here, but also a lot of wildfires going on. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to introduce to our audience, uh, you know, those who don't know you, we all should know you. But, you know, for those audience members who don't know uh, Commissioner France, she is a long term uh, public citizen who have been in our state for a long time and lead this amazing effort in preserving our wild land and our wildlife fighting and from coastal water to land to forest. I mean, you like, I mean, in the old days, you probably are considered like the head of all the land owners, you know, managing all these things, right? <laughs> in feudal area of time, you always yeah. You know, like not quite a king or queen, but right up there. That's Land. right. Land. That's right. I don't think we had, well, it's interesting. I don't think we had as many environmental challenges, but I also think there was probably very few women in that role. So, exactly. Uh, and the second woman ever to serve in this role for Washington State. So, amazing. Um, and how long have you been in this role? I am now in my sixth year. So, I was elected in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, during a very significant election. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I've been in this role for six six years basically been through a lot um, we've seen enormous amount of changes within our landscapes within our waters wildfire obviously becoming more and more pressing and um you know and so for your listeners because i think i'm one of those positions that is v not very well known right. about the full breadth and i like to say we literally touch everybody's lives from where they're born um to where they go to school to the jobs they have in between, all the way to uh, their end of their life. Um, so, and well, well, public lands. So, yeah. two point six million acres of aquatic lands, right? Right, right. The entire and coast. Yeah, yeah. Lots down. of six million uh, acres. That's yeah. a lot of lands. Lake wow. Washington, South Lake yeah. Union. We, wow. I, oh, I manage all the lands underneath the water. So we have there. Everything from marinas, ports, right. um, you have shellfish. We're one of the largest shellfish producers for oysters and clams, and also the gooey duck, which wow. is, we're the only state, and it's China's number one aphrodisiac, and it's about a $30 million industry, and we grow uh, unbelievable gooey ducks. Um, mm. In addition to that, we oversee 3 million acres of uplands, the lands that are above water. So 2 million acres of forest land, which provides some of the most amazing recreation areas, but also some of the most uh, amazing conservation habitat areas. And we provide a lot of the wood that mm -hmm. goes to address our housing crisis and meet all of our building needs. Mm -hmm. um, a million acres of agricultural land. We're the largest wheat producer in the state. So uh, when you... When you're eating your croissant or your, you know, toast in the morning, you can think about the work we do. We're also expanded into vineyards, orchards. We are growing some of the most amazing wine in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, clean energy. Right. And then people may be more familiar with our, we also have Costco, Safeways, Fred Myers, the Edgewater Hotel. 
And the money we generate from that goes directly to funding schools and mm -hmm. providing basic health, housing, human services at the local level. Very nice. I mean, basically the food we eat, the anything that touched the land, grow out of the land and the sea all around here, touch the area permits and licenses. You know, you want to go crabbing, you want to go all those issuance and and things like that. Uh, you got to walk through Commissioner Fran's um, underlings. I mean, basically, she's at the top, and then she oversees all these people that manage all these different departments. That's how high Commissioner mm -hmm. is. So it's an honor to have you on the show. Well, thank you. It's a great honor to be here. Okay, so let's talk about the wildlife preparedness and response. I know the hot season is coming on, and uh, you know every every summer we're enjoying the the weather, but we got the smoke going on all over uh, around us with the dark sky every summer now, right? Yeah. Some kind yeah. of air that is always going around. So uh, in the past, you know, I think we have two big fires last year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, way more. Way oh, more. really? Well, I saw 50 fires. We had 1,850 oh, fires, second worst um, number of fires. Um, and we had I don't know, about 800,000 acres burned. Now, but we kept actually with all those fires, we kept around 94% of those fires to less than 10 acres. But then there was a number of fires that are very significant that can be over 100,000 acres in size. But last year was our most difficult year because we started fighting fires as early as April um, with 220 fires in April, which is usually our rainy season. We all are used to Washington State's rain um, and it went well into mid-September. Um, Washington State was experiencing a drought. We may all remember those hot, dry weather. Well, that can dry our landscape out pretty quickly and keep it pretty hot. And so how did all these fires get started? Is it a cigarette smoke, irresponsible flick, or how did this happen? So about 90% of our fires are caused by humans. So we definitely have a significant role in these fires. Um, mm -hmm. The majority of our fires are debris pile burns. So people are out there doing their spring cleaning in their yard. And, and it's the way they manage it sometimes when they have a lot of spring cleaning to do is they light it and... What used to be possible that it wouldn't get out of control um, was how we'd manage our yard. But now, given we're having hotter temperatures, longer season, all it takes is a wind to pick up one of those embers. It will blow it. And now all of a sudden, what you had as a small managed fire becomes very significant. In addition oh. to that, people will, believe it or not, chains dragging from your truck or your car will cause... The spark. And it'll oh. fly over. If you've ever been driving I-5, right, and you see these burned areas, oftentimes that's where a truck's going down and there's a chain and all it is is one spark and the landscape's so dry, it creates a fire. Oh, boy. Um, cigarettes are one of them. Uh, in addition to that, fireworks, uh, as well as um, if you drive your car on dry grass and any part of the bottom of your car will be hot and touches that grass, it can cause a fire. Wow, who would have thought that? The yeah. temperature here is hot enough for that to happen. Right, and that's part of what's happened. So our landscape, because we're getting less moisture, and especially mm -hmm. in a drought situation, our landscape will dry up very, very quickly, and it will stay dry for very long periods. When that happens, all it takes is some type of ignition, whether it's lightning or whether it's somebody's bonfire or something, and that fire will grow much quicker because the landscape's so dry. And a great context is last year, you remember we had a heat dome. Remember there's 100 degree temperatures. Mm -hmm. Tragically, 100 people died as a result of that heat dome. Um, in addition to that, we had this significant drought and we our landscape was so dry for over two months that you think about the moisture content of paper is five percent right and we all know when you're trying to start a fire and you can't get it going take some paper on it and yeah, it'll go quicker because it, it yeah. burns so fast mm -hmm. our landscape was two percent moisture content it burned faster than paper last year wow wow now which region so washington state is on the northwest area 
which, which part of the land tend to have the most fires happen? Is it on the Spokane, uh, over the mountain on the eastern? Yeah. Um, so fire? about 60, 65% of our fires every year are in eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. And it will largely be sort of that central area through the um, east side of the Cascades, right? As you go over the crest of the mountain from the west east, um, in that heavy forested area, much of that is federal land. It will then create sort of a swath all the way over to the northeast region of the state. Those are our wildfires that are largely in forested landscapes. We then will also have grassland fires or, um, where in that case, the grass is so, it's grazing land, sagebrush land, and that will go quickly because it'll get hot and dry and all it takes is wind and there's not much to slow that fire down. On the west yeah. side, we have around 30, 35% every single year of fires. It's growing around 35 to 40%. Again, much of that is in that forest and landscape up in the Northwest and Whatcom, some mm -hmm. in Snohomish in the Cascades. And then we've seen in the Olympic Peninsula, which is our rainforest, mm -hmm. a lot more fires year after year as our forests are getting drier and they're changing. Well, folks, be careful out there. If you trucker, you got to wrap up those jeans. You know, if you're drying, driving on uh, dry land, be careful. Let's not start any more fires uh, and, and help Commissioner Franz job a little bit. Yeah. That would be so much better. It'll be so much easier for our firefighters, our men and women who are really very, very young, hard. putting their lives on the line, and it's very difficult conditions. So anybody can do everything their part to help um, reduce starting these fires. Yeah, our forests. So that's what, talking about forest health. Um, is there anything else that we can learn from you uh, in terms of protecting our forests and preserving our natural beauty and resources? Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, right now, we're seeing unbelievable number of people going out and enjoying our recreation lands. I mean, we know with COVID, it was very difficult on many of us. Uh, and many people wanted to get outside and we saw more people than ever take to our landscape and enjoy for hiking, biking, uh, kayaking. We want that. We want people to enjoy the natural beauty of Washington State, but we also are urging people to show care for these lands, um, not only in reducing fires from starting, but also make sure you're picking up after yourself. Leave no trace. Don't leave your trash out there. Leave it better than you found it, ideally, um, and care for the, the earth as rule. much as the earth is caring for us. That's right. Uh, Patricia uh, and Robert just pipe up on the comment. Hello, Monique. My son and me were caught in Idaho last summer, ruined our trip. So, you know, these fires are stopping people from, you know, traveling and it's very uh, difficult for, for them to deal with, with the smoke. Also, let's talk about salmon recovery. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, one of the top producers in, in terms of seafood, especially salmon, uh, in, in, in the United States, am I right? Oh, absolutely. And and we know it's one of the healthiest food sources. And we know it's been, our salmon have been on significant decline for over 30 years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, salmon is iconic to our state, much like our forests are, right? We're the evergreen state, we're the salmon state. We know our orcas, You many people may remember um, where we had the mother who carried her baby calf and died yeah, um, right. for weeks. Um, and the reality is we are seeing significant decline in the numbers of our salmon within our Puget Sound and our rivers, lakes, and streams. And so in our work, we um, the funds that we generate from the revenues of the management of our lands for with ports and marinas and in um, and shellfish and gooey ducks goes directly to salmon habitat restoration and protection. Right. And we have been working tirelessly to remove over, we've literally removed like 70 Boeing 747s worth of toxic material from the Puget Sound. These are like derelict vessels and styrofoam and creosote pilings and garbage people are oh, throwing boy. into our Puget Sound. We've done it over the last 10 years trying to clean up so we have clean waterways. Right, right. Um, in addition to that, we've been working to try to help improve the habitat on the near shore, um, mm -hmm. uh, as well as improve the habitat in our streams and our rivers. And within our urban areas, we have a very dense urban areas where we've lost a lot of that tree canopy. Right. And a lot of our storm water, when it rains, picks up all those chemicals and toxins from our cars and everything else and flushes it. Dump it into the water. Aye. 
So how do we uh, counter the effect of the environment in our water? Is there a way to filter or, uh, you know, chemically treated these water? Yeah. Obviously, that would be a very difficult problem for you to solve. Share with us, what are some of the plans? Well, here's where the beauty of it is literally nature is our solution, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, what our salmon need most is those cool, clean waters. Mm -hmm. And they need it not just in the headlands of the Cascades and the mountains where we are dense in forests, but they also need it in our suburban and our urban areas. We need to be planting more trees within our urban areas So, because what they can do is one, they can capture those toxins, they can clean the water out before it moves on. Um, they can also keep those waterways that our salmon are going through cooler, especially mm -hmm. as we see hotter temperatures. And the right. beauty of that is it won't just save our salmon, but it will also help our people. As we saw with the heat dome, we have places within our state where we have significant amount of communities and neighborhoods that have very limited tree canopy. And as we see hotter temperatures of our 100 mm -hmm. degrees, it's impacting not just our air quality and the air we breathe, but also mm -hmm. how we stay cool. Right. Um, so one of the things we're working to is help communities that have limited tree canopy to help really reforest areas along on the sides of the street, up into their mm -hmm. park areas, up into more natural areas so that we can actually um, not only help protect salmon, but we can also protect our communities. Well, can we touch very quickly uh, on the what someone sent in this question? Uh, what are you anticipating in light of the late snow melt? Just very quickly, and we have about two more minutes. Okay, for fire season, yes. Yeah. So we're actually we're right now hopefully optimistic. We um, are seeing that one we've had only about seventy five fires to date this year. Remember, we had two hundred twenty last April in April alone. Mm -hmm. So we've had reduced fires this spring because of that snowpack we had and because of the rain. But people need to remember that once July comes in August, that landscape's gonna dry out very, very fast. And during this time, our grass has only gotten taller. Right. So we call it by July and August, that grass moves from grass to grassoline. And so we need people to still be cautious, still take care and prevent these fires starting in the first place. But we do believe this year will likely be much um, easier for us than last year. How about uh, DNR's efforts to work with private businesses to the benefit of uh, the community? Yeah, I mean, so specifically, I mean, right now we work with, um, we're looking to businesses to help us in the context of our salmon habitat restoration and um, protection. Um, in the Snohomish watershed specifically, we're looking at a, private landowners and some of the larger ones, mm -hmm. businesses like Boeing, that's making, they've taken significant steps to actually restore um, salmon habitat areas on properties they own and even outside, um, as well as looking to our local governments to help us reforest areas that historically had trees and need trees desperately and bring nature back to the people and back to the salmon in these communities. So we work closely with them as landowners and as lessees of our land, but also as their own businesses within urban areas. Okay, well, we have 30 seconds left. Last question, uh, will you be running for governor? <laughs> so people have asked me this everywhere I go. I mean, I think one of the things that's exciting, I'll be on the Eastern Washington side, I have Republicans and Democrats East and West, rural and urban, who've asked me to consider running for governor. I think the reason why is they know that I am very much about bridging divides. We have a divided state. We have a divided nation. And we get far more accomplished when we work together for a common purpose. Um, so I'll, I will, I'm considering it right now. I'm focused on making sure this wildfire season is safe and we not only keep our communities safe, but our firefighters come home safely to their families. And then we continue to rise to the challenge that climate change is presenting, as well as the economic challenges that many of our communities, are, especially our rural communities, are facing. Um, so I am so excited to have this conversation with you. We are making great progress on so much work, and it's the greatest honor of my life to be able to serve the people of Washington State in every corner of the state. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you on Afternoons with, uh, with Monique, Commissioner of France. I enjoy talking with you. And um, episode 100 is coming up and I'm having a party. So we've been 
everybody who had been on my show to come on. And if you want to see my guest list, all you have to do is go to www.afternoonswithmonique.us and then you find the guest list and you can see who else will be coming to my Oh, I'd love that. It would be wonderful. This is a great honor. Thank you for all you do. And thanks for it and giving me the opportunity to join you today. My pleasure. All right. Well, have a good afternoon, Commissioner France. Thank you so much. Next week, we will have um, John Lundin, a Northwest Alpine skiing historian and a federal lawyer to come on uh, my show once again. He's an author who had been on Afternoons with Monique before, and he will be sharing with us what he is up to these days. All right, everyone. Have a great afternoon. See you next week. Ray.